Hello all, welcome back to Introduction to Atmospheric Dynamics. In the last part of Chapter 3, Application of the Basic Equations, we're going to be assessing a developing surface low using the knowledge we learned in Part 4 about vertical motion. In order to do so, we're going to start with the kinematic method of diagnosing the vertical pressure velocity. Recall that this method starts with the continuity equation on pressure surfaces in the form shown here. If we integrate both sides of this expression from a pressure level P prime to the top of the atmosphere, that is at P equals zero, we observe that using fundamental theorem of calculus, the left-hand side of this expression then allows us to write uh, the integral as omega at P prime minus omega at P zero. However, the top of the atmosphere value of omega is effectively zero. It's more of an idealization, honestly, in this approximation, and so it can be neglected from our expression. On the right-hand side of our integral, we have the vertical integral of the divergence of the flow. Consequently, the expression that emerges from this integration allows us to relate the vertical pressure velocity at any particular pressure level, P prime, to the integral of the divergence above that level. Now let's consider what happens if we take P prime to be the surface. Recall our original equation for omega that relates it to the vertical velocity w. This expression includes three terms. The first term is the Eulerian change in pressure. The second term is advection of pressure by the ageostrophic wind. And the third term incorporates the vertical velocity. We had performed a scale analysis of the three terms in this expression using the scales associated with large-scale motion. However, in the special case of the surface, we note that the vertical velocity will be zero, at least in the case of a perfectly flat surface. Consequently, this last term actually becomes zero in the case of uh, omega exactly at the surface. And so it turns out that omega effectively describes the Eulerian change in pressure at this point. We'll be using this then in order to assess how surface pressure changes in response to uh, changes in omega. So since at the surface we have omega approximately equal to the Eulerian change in pressure, that means that from our expression for omega at an arbitrary pressure level, uh, we can plug in P prime equals PS and then observe that the Eulerian change in pressure at the surface is approximately given by the vertical integral over the entire atmospheric column of the divergence of the flow. Note that the negative term, uh, the negative sign is also included here that needs to be incorporated in these calculations. We'll see later how that plays out. Effectively, what this means is that convergence of mass into the column will increase the surface pressure. This makes sense from a from the basic principle of conservation of mass. If mass moves into our atmospheric column, then the total amount of mass within that column must increase, and consequently the pressure felt at the surface, which is proportional to the amount of mass above you, must increase. Divergence of mass, on the other hand, must correspond to a loss of mass within the fluid column, and hence will lead to a decrease in surface pressure as the mass above you in the atmospheric column decreases. Okay, now let's look at how this surface low develops. We have pressure surfaces here denoted with dashed blue lines and the Earth's surface down at the bottom with the thick brown line. Let's assume that some initial warming occurs within the mid-troposphere. This warming then leads to an increasing layer thickness in response to the hypsometric equation. That is, the warming within the middle of the troposphere causes a increase in the volume required for individual for uh, e between geopotential surfaces that then push up the geopotential surfaces above the point of warming. Consequently, we have thicker thicker uh, layers in the region where the warming has occurred, and we've effectively increased the uh, the geopotential height above the warming point. Note that at this point, nothing has occurred to the uh, geopotential surfaces below the point where warming occurred. However, once these surfaces have been pushed up, we now have a gradient in the geopotential field. 
This gradient in the geopotential then causes the velocity to be induced above the point of warming and leads to divergence of mass in the atmospheric column. Namely, to the right of the warming, we must have that fluid parcels move to the right, and to the left of the warming, in correspondence with the slope of the geopotential surface, we have that fluid moves to the left. Consequently, we lose mass from the fluid column. This loss of mass from the fluid column then causes us to have lower surface pressure values in the fluid column analogous to the equation that we derived earlier within this lecture, and this leads to a generation of a surface low pressure. And in addition to the surface low pressure that forms immediately below the warming, we also have corresponding high pressure regions located to each side of the low. Along the surface then, along this constant height surface, we then have an induced pressure gradient which initiates convergence down here. So near the Earth's surface, we have convergence of flow, and near the top of the atmosphere, we have divergence of flow. As air is now being pumped into the fluid column from below due to converging motion, and pumped out of the fluid column above because of diverging motion, this then triggers rising motion through the interior of the fluid column, and hence completing our cycle.